We continue on the section of preventive measures. And next we have our speaker, Dr. Nandita Arun, who's gonna be talking to us on the growing rate of diabetic and its contribution, the connection between diabetes and chronic kidney disease and early preventive measures. Thank you, thank you so much, uh, Mariam. I'm so happy to be here today. Uh, thank you for inviting me and uh, it's an honor in fact. Um, so, yes, I am Dr. Nandita Arun and I am a consultant diabetologist from Chennai. Today, I am going to be addressing um, three main uh, questions. One is, why do we have a growing prevalence or growing numbers of type 2 diabetes in our country? Number one. Number two, what are the risk factors and can this growing numbers, can, actually, can it actually be curtailed or can it actually be prevented? Um, beyond that, I'm also going to be talking about what the complications of type 2 diabetes are. And of course, in that front, I'm going to be discussing chronic kidney disease and uh, what we can do to actually prevent the progression of diabetic nephropathy or diabetic uh, kidney disease and early detection of the disease as well. So, uh, without further ado, I am first going to be addressing the first question, which is the growing prevalence of type 2 diabetes. I'm going to be also discussing briefly the increase in prevalence, the slight surge in uh, prevalence of type 2 diabetes or diabetes as a whole post-COVID as well. And there's a couple of reasons for that. So, um, yes, we in India are one of the uh, leading um, uh, globally, if we look at the prevalence of type 2 diabetes, we are uh, one of the countries which has the highest prevalence of type 2 diabetes. And uh, it's a joke to say that China, in fact, has outnumbered us even in that front. But uh, yes, as Asians, we do have a higher prevalence, which includes China. And between uh, China and India, it just so happens that China, China has a bigger population and uh, we do have a high uh, prevalence of type 2 diabetes. Now, there are certain reasons for these. And when we look at the risk factors for type 2 diabetes, we can divide this as both genetic or non-modifiable risk factors and the modifiable risk factors, right? So the non-modifiable risk factors would be our ethnicity, which is just being Indian itself. I'm going to come to that briefly. Beyond that, it is the age. So as our age progresses beyond the age of 35 or 40, our risk for type 2 diabetes increases. Third would be a positive family history. So someone with a positive family history of type 2 diabetes, like parents with type 2 diabetes, um, first or second generation or even grandparents with type 2 diabetes, your risk of or hereditary is something you cannot change. These are the non-modifiable risk factors. Now, before I move on to the modifiable risk factors, let me enumerate these. Now, as Indians, why do we have a higher propensity to develop type 2 diabetes? There are several reasons for these. The number one being that, yes, as Indians, we are um, leaner as a population as compared to the Western population. However, for any given BMI or body mass index, we have a higher insulin resistance, a higher abdominal obesity, or which is what is called the waist circumference. And this is what contributes to a higher prevalence of type 2 diabetes. So it is what is called metabolic obesity by definition. Although we talk about obesity in terms of BMI, although compared to the Western population, we are probably leaner. We have a higher propensity to develop type 2 diabetes because even at a lower body mass index, we have higher insulin resistance and higher body mass, uh, uh, body fat or abdominal fat or visceral fat, which is basically the fat which is in the liver and the pancreas and deposition of fat in our organs, which contributes to a higher risk of type 2 diabetes, right? That is one reason. The second reason is that we as Indians, even at a younger age, have a higher or a lower rather threshold to develop type 2 diabetes. Now, what, that, what does that actually mean? The Western population or people uh, like the Caucasians, like the Westerners, like the white people, develop type 2 diabetes above the age of, say, 50 or 60. But we as Indians develop type 2 diabetes even at a younger age. So even at 
beyond the age of 35 or 40, our risk of developing type 2 diabetes is higher than that of a Western population, uh, a person. So these are peculiarities among the Indians, which increases our prevalence of type 2 diabetes in the Indian subcontinent. Unfortunately, whatever I spoke to you so far about, the family history, the age, and the Indian ethnicity are all non-modifiable risk factors, which cannot be modified. Now, if you remember in the uh, initial part of my um, talking to you so far, I also told you there are modifiable risk factors. So now I'm coming to the good, good news, right? So the modifiable risk factors would be things that we can control, things that we are in our hands, which we can actually modify, as the name indicates, to prevent or to reduce our risk of developing type 2 diabetes. Now, what are these modifiable risk factors? The first most important would be our lifestyle. And this is something that Mariam, in fact, wanted me to talk about to you all, because this is something that is extremely relevant to many of you listening to me here today. When we talk about lifestyle, lifestyle would include our diet, physical activity, smoking, alcohol, the number of hours we watch television, in fact, the number of hours we sit in front of our computers, these are all directly proportional to our risk of developing lifestyle disorders like type 2 diabetes, right? So what can we do about this? And what does that actually mean? When it comes to physical activity, for example, it is proven that the number of hours that we spend sitting in front of the television or sitting in front of our computers or the so-called sedentary lifestyle is directly proportional to our risk of type 2 diabetes. In other words, physical inactivity or lack of exercise is directly proportional or will increase our risk of type 2 diabetes which obviously means that we need to get out there and we need to start exercising. Now, when I say exercising, it does not have to be something like, it. well, the best form of exercise would be walking. Um, it has been proven that just merely 30 minutes of walking five days a week, brisk walking, can actually reduce your risk of type 2 diabetes. But if walking is something that people find boring. It can be something as simple as even going to the gym, something as simple as dancing, something as simple as jogging or swimming or uh, playing with your child, playing football, playing a sport. It can be anything, but some form of physical activity that will be effective enough to increase your heart rate more than 25% from your baseline for at least 30 minutes per day five days of the week. And this is what has been proven to shown to reduce your risk of type 2 diabetes in the future. So that is as far as physical activity is concerned. The next would be your diet. And I'm sure many of you have heard the so-called phrase that what you eat is what you are, isn't it? Now, absolutely. This is something that many of us will swear by because this is something as a doctor, as a physician, we see every day and it has been scientifically backed up, scientifically proven. Yes, what you eat is what you are. So refined sugars. This is something to completely try to cut out as much as possible. Because if we can cut down on refined sugars, especially white sugar, sugars which are being added to your dessert, processed foods and um, things like uh, pastries or cereals which are you know available over the counter which promise something else which say oh um, health or a power packed or a high protein read between the lines most of these packaging or pro processed food contain a large amount of processed sugars as well and this is going to increase your risk of type 2 diabetes in the future. So working on your diet is extremely important and cutting down on refined sugars, cutting down on high calorie diets, cutting down on processed foods is going to help you to reduce your risk of type 2 diabetes in the future as well. So diet as well as physical activity is extremely important to reduce your risk of type 2 diabetes, especially if you have the non-modifiable risk factors like a positive family history, like I had mentioned earlier, and your ethnicity. These are factors to definitely look into. 
So, so far I spoke to you about the prevention of type 2 diabetes. Now, for those who are already diabetic, who have a risk of complications, the most important complications is that diabetes, when uncontrolled, can affect the vital organs, which would, of course, include the eyes, the kidneys, the heart, and the nerves. And when it comes to the kidneys, it's called diabetic nephropathy. Now, diabetic nephropathy, of course, has various stages. It has the early stage of microalbuminuria, which is a microprotein leak in your urine. And then it progresses to a macro or a proteinuria, which is a large amount of protein leak. And then it progresses to kidney disease. In my opinion, and globally, it is now accepted that if you see your doctor regularly, if you do have type 2 diabetes, keeping your blood sugar under check, going to your doctor regularly, screening for complications. And when I say screening for complications, I'm sure your doctor is going to screen you. I'm sure your doctor is going to check for urine for microalbumin, which is even the microprotein leak. And a collaboration or a team effort, not just a diabetologist or a physician or a general physician treating you, but a team effort between your treating physician and your nephrologist is extremely important right from the beginning to reduce your risk of progression of kidney disease because we as Indians have a higher incidence of also the complications of diabetes, including diabetic nephropathy. So, of course, beyond this, there are a number of drugs, um, including... <coughs> The, um, they are called the angiotensin receptor blockers. And then we have newer anti-diabetic agents which have proven to reduce your risk of diabetic nephropathy. And all this together and a collective effort of the collaboration between your diabetologist and your nephrologist will help you reduce your risk of diabetic nephropathy. Last but not the least, we are now in a post-COVID era. And uh, well, has COVID affected us? Well, yes, it has. Um, it's affected right from a newborn child to the aged, um, you know, uh, people above in the geriatric age group. And has it affected people with diabetes? The answer is yes. We have found that the COVID virus as such has a direct effect on the pancreas. Now, the pancreas are the endocrine or the organs which release insulin, which is a glucose-lowering hormone. And post-COVID or post-infection with the COVID virus, not just people with diabetes, we have found worsening in their glucose or blood sugar control. Even people with borderline diabetes, we have found that their Diabetes has suddenly tipped over to the high blood glucose levels. So yes, post-COVID has direct effects of the COVID virus on the prevalence of type 2 diabetes, number one. Beyond that, the virus has also have had all, all these negative impacts on lifestyle because of the lockdown effect. People have reduced their physical activity. They're all There's a lot of people working from home, doing a lot of online work. So movement and the overall physical activity has come down. Stress levels have increased. All this has, in fact, increased the prevalence of lifestyle disorders, not just type 2 diabetes, but also cardiovascular disease. So with that as a note, I would like to end on a positive note, of course, by saying that, yes, type 2 diabetes is a lifestyle disorder. It does affect the vital organs, including, including the kidneys. However, it does also have modifiable risk factors which are in our control. And if we can work as a group, we can work as a team, which would include the patient and the doctors, we can, in fact, work towards just like the uh, name as the uh, diabetes or the kidney warriors. We can work against not just diabetes, but also diabetic kidney disease. Thank you, diabetic kidney um, warriors. And thank you to Mariam and your entire team for having me here today. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Nandita Arun, for beautifully presenting to us and creating an awareness on the growing rate of diabetes in the country.